Hi, uh, this is a video response uh, to some of the questions that I've been uh, asked uh, several times about the F1 and uh, issues uh, about um, convex edge and how they sharpen. Uh, so today, uh, I hope to give a short uh, education okay, to uh, uh, the viewers out there because uh, when I um, first uh, was introduced to convex knives, uh, um, I didn't really understand as well uh, what's the difference between uh, convex and uh, um, uh, VH. Okay, most knives out there uh, that people can purchase are uh, uh, actually VH knives. So, uh, convex um, uh, may be uh, relatively new to uh, people in the beginning. So, uh, yes, uh, including myself. Okay, so uh, now that I've uh, uh, understood and uh, had uh, experiences uh, with uh, convex uh, edge. Okay, uh, I will give some explanation. Uh, okay, first off, uh, one question that a friend uh, asked me is uh, regarding this F1 on uh, woodwork, uh, bushcrafting, and uh, uh, food preparation. Uh, I would say the F1 uh, can handle uh, bushcraft work uh, pretty well uh, and as for food preparation uh, it is okay uh, it's a good slicer because of the the belly as you can see and uh, it has uh, uh, a rather uh, thick spine okay uh, thicker than a kitchen knife uh, which um, this uh, thickness is uh, not very good as compared to a kitchen knife when you uh, do cutting or slicing uh, like a tomato or even a, a pear or apple because uh, uh, this uh, thickness tends to split the the uh, the thing you're cutting apart, especially fibrous things uh, or soft things like a tomato. So in that respect, a thin uh, blade would be better. However, for general uh, food preparation out uh, in the wild, um, in the outdoors, uh, that would be fine. Uh, bushcrafting handles well, like I said. Uh, just that, um, like I, I mentioned in my previous videos, I do recommend uh, reprofiling the edge to give it a stronger, uh, tougher uh, convex edge. Meaning, the, ang the edge was originally thin, like this. Okay? Uh, if you reprofile it, you are doing uh, something like this to it. Okay? So uh, you leave more metal at the, at the very edge and the angle is wider, okay? So which means it will be a tougher edge. The original uh, edge on the F1 is uh, rather weak, okay? And uh, so, so uh, bushcrafting food preparation, uh, no problem. The F1 uh, should do uh, way better than the uh, Condor Bush Law. Okay? Uh, as for the uh, uh, question uh, whether uh, is the F1 similar to a Scandi grind like a Mora, okay, uh, I must say that uh, it is uh, very different uh, from uh, a Scandi grind. Okay, uh, I have uh, I've drawn out some uh, diagrams. First off, let's have a look. Okay, this is uh, the usual uh, 
VH, okay? And uh, Scandi is like this. That means it combines the secondary and uh, uh, it is a, a huge V grind, okay? That means there are only two bevels, one over here, one here. As for this, uh, v, v, uh, the standard VH, there is a small bevel, okay, micro bevel here, followed by the secondary H, and then uh, I did not draw, but there is uh, the primary uh, uh, bevel, okay, over here. But the Scandi has the primary, okay, over here, primary bevel and then secondary bevel, and that's it, okay? That means the micro bevel, the micro VH is uh, included, is, uh, yes, together with the secondary uh, bevel. Uh, so this is a Scandi grind. This is a normal uh, VH, and then this is a convex grind, meaning the, or rather, let's talk about just the edge, okay? The convex edge. Uh, it is, uh, as you can see from the diagram, it is not flat, but it is uh, rounded at the sides. Okay, the micro bevel is uh, rounded. Okay, so uh, I will call that a convex uh, edge. However, you can have a convex edge on a hollow grind like the Sabenza, okay, or you can have a convex uh, uh, micro bevel on a standard uh, a convex grind, that means a full convex grind. Whenever you hear convex, uh, it is like the name convex suggests, it is uh, 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 rounded or curved uh, uh, cross section uh, or, or uh, uh, side okay so uh, that's what it means a convex grind okay uh, as what's the difference okay between convex and uh, VH is that there are more metal molecules uh, at the very edge and going down compared to a VH okay so that's the difference. So a convex edge is generally uh, tougher than a VH, okay? Uh, given the same angle, okay? Um, so I love convex edge. However, uh, with a convex edge, you have to uh, sharpen it uh, differently, which brings me to uh, the other question that you have, okay? Uh, whether it's using sandpaper, uh, the best way to sharpen uh, a convex edge or the F1, okay? Uh, this question has been asked me uh, several times um, by different people. So today, I finally got down to doing this video. Um, uh, look at this, okay? This is a, uh, a flat whetstone. Okay, if this is a flat whetstone, such as this, for even uh, DC uh, 4, okay, this is a, a solid uh, uh, whetstone, okay. So, uh, if you put the uh, VH, okay, VH, okay, on the whetstone, Okay, it will be appropriate. Okay, because the VH, uh, each side is flat. So you lie the, you lay the the flat side, okay, of the VH, on the flat and hard whetstone. Okay, so you will maintain the flat, uh, the flatness. Okay, and preserve the VH. Okay. However, if you do that on a convex edge, okay, what happens is that it creates a micro VH on the convex edge. Remember, 
uh, a convex edge okay is not flat on the sides it is uh, curved or rounded if you apply it to a flat surface okay like so okay you will have you will naturally uh, uh, create a micro v edge at the very uh, near the very at the very tip of the convex uh, edge which means you will lose uh, the true convex at the very tip which is actually the contact point okay your very edge so by using uh, by putting the uh, convex edge on a whetstone to sharpen uh, what you would normally what you will end up doing is uh, creating a micro VH on your convex edge meaning uh, you have lost your convex edge but you can always uh, get it back again by uh, something called reprofiling your edge okay so uh, if you want to preserve and sharpen and at the same time sharpen the convex edge you will have to do something uh, you have to sharpen it differently okay you will have to uh, use uh, sandpaper okay and lay it on top uh, this yellow line okay represents uh, it can be a uh, leather rubber or mounds pad okay and you lay your sandpaper on top of it and this portion here uh, can be wood or any flat hard surface okay uh, by laying your convex edge on the sandpaper which is on sitting on top of the leather or rubber or what have you okay uh, and you sharpen away okay what you do is uh, what happens okay is this when the convex edge okay is uh, uh, when you apply pressure on the sandpaper which is on top of a uh, rubber or leather uh, this edge okay will compress the sandpaper and the leather underneath it and create a convex area uh, a concave area sorry okay this part will just uh, concave in okay and so I have written down compression of leather creates a concave okay like this okay to sharpen and preserve the convex edge so uh, to maintain uh, F1 or any other knife with a convex edge okay when you apply pressure to sandpaper on a compressible leather or rubber uh, it creates a concave portion okay and that will maintain uh, the, the convex or curved uh, uh, edge okay of your knife of your convex knife so that's why okay uh, you you will see that uh, uh, people who sharpen the uh, convex knives will uh, use sandpaper because sandpaper can flex and uh, be uh, and follow okay the convex uh, the concave rather the concave uh, compression of the leather or mouse pad okay so uh, this will be the system okay I use uh, a, a straw which has uh, leather okay and then lay uh, uh, sandpaper on top okay so uh, I hope this answers your question and uh, so thank you very much for watching uh, have a good day